This video examines the foundations of microwave chemistry, providing fundamental information about microwave heating as it is applied to synthetic chemistry. Here we have a diagram that represents a microwave. Microwaves are a form of electromagnetic energy and so are comprised of orthogonally opposed electric and magnetic fields. It is the electric field that creates the dielectric heating effect that is useful in chemistry. Microwave energy is at the lower end of the electromagnetic spectrum and is defined as the 300 megahertz to about 300 gigahertz frequency range. The FCC and other governmental regulatory bodies allow use of only a handful of frequencies for industrial, scientific, or medical applications. CEM instruments use microwave energy with a frequency of 2.45 gigahertz. This frequency most efficiently heats general laboratory scale samples. A common early misconception about microwave energy is that it can make and or break chemical bonds. But microwave photons are low energy sources and are comparatively very low in energy relative to the energy required for molecular bonding. Microwaves only induce molecular rotation and do not affect the structure of a molecule. Energy absorption heats purely through kinetic excitation. This kinetic excitation takes place through two primary forms of energy transfer, dipole rotation and ionic conduction. The animation shown here represents water molecules being heated by microwave energy. Since water molecules possess a dipole, they try to align with the rapidly changing amplitude of the electric field as it passes through them. This rotational motion, or dipole rotation of the molecule as it tries to orient itself with the field, results in heating through molecular friction. This next animation shows how a solution of ions interacts with microwave energy. Here you see two ions in solution as they attempt to align themselves with the incident electric field, similar to the behavior of the molecules in the previous animation. This heating through molecular friction is an example of ionic conduction. Now let's compare heating a solution conductively using a hot plate to heating volumetrically using a CEM microwave. With a hot plate, the chemist first needs to wait for the plate to warm up to the desired temperature. After that, Heat must slowly be transferred through the glass vessel until it finally reaches the reaction solution. This is a highly inefficient and slow process. Once the reaction is finished, the vessel is removed from the hot plate and set aside. The chemist must then wait a while for it to cool down. However, in the case of microwave heating, the reaction vessel is largely transparent to microwave energy, and the reaction solution is heated directly and volumetrically the chemist is able to heat the reaction without having to heat the vessel first. Microwave energy interacts directly with the reaction solution and reagents in solution, allowing chemists to take advantage of a phenomenon known as selective heating. With selective heating, reagents such as heterogeneous catalysts that couple well to the electric field absorb energy selectively. The result is a rapid, instantaneous heating of the reaction mixture. Once a reaction is completed, the microwave magnetron switches off and compressed air rapidly cools the reaction to safe handling temperatures in a matter of one to two minutes. You might be asking, how do I get started? How can I take my conventional reaction and run it in the microwave? Next we'll look at the process of reaction optimization and see how optimizing a microwave reaction is similar to optimizing conventional reactions. First, let's answer some commonly asked questions, such as, what can a chemist put in the microwave? The answer is, almost anything. Microwave chemistry includes neat reactions, reductions, eliminations, couplings, and much more. There is literature on nearly every type of transformation. Researchers usually ask about the dangers of putting metals in the microwave. Most people have accidentally left foil on leftovers or a spoon in a cup of soup in the home microwave, and they've seen sparks as a result. However, metals immersed in solution are entirely safe to use in CEM microwaves. Finely divided powders are preferred, but bulk metals such as copper shot or magnesium turnings are also safe to use with some mindful reaction programming. Another common question is, can I work under an inert atmosphere? The answer to this question is also yes. The caps used on CEM Discover reaction vials reseal following puncture, as seen here, so inert reactions can be performed with ease. Treat the cap like a traditional septum. 
Use a larger gauge, smaller bore needle when piercing the cap and do not repeatedly puncture in the same location as this could prevent reseal. Alternatively, you can prep the reaction vial in a glove bag or glove box. The Discover reaction vials will maintain the inert atmosphere for a couple of hours, so you're safe to prep multiple reactions at once and cue them up on the auto sampler. Now let's discuss the parameters to consider when performing a reaction in the microwave. We'll first discuss temperature and time, since these are the two common parameters chemists already use. When programming temperature in the microwave, a conservative chemist may start at the conventional reaction temperature or reflux to get an initial baseline. For shorter reaction times, a good starting point is 25 degrees C above the boiling point of the solution. Then, instead of optimizing the temperature in 5 degree increments, try using 25 to 50 degree jumps and monitor your results by TLC or some other analytical technique. When programming a reaction time in the microwave, it's okay to be impatient. Most microwave reactions running at 120 to 160 degrees C are complete in less than 15 minutes. As a general guideline, start with a 5 minute reaction for fast results, then bump up to 10, 15 or as much as 30 minutes for reactions conventionally done overnight. Two new parameters to consider in microwave chemistry are the power and pressure settings. The power setting is not the amount of power used to heat a reaction, but rather the maximum allowed power. CEM's intelligent power control will automatically modulate the power output to heat a reaction solution to the desired temperature as quickly as possible without temperature overshoot and maintain that temperature. You can see in this graph that greater power is necessary when ramping up to temperature, but after the reaction has begun, less power is required to maintain the temperature set point. CEM does offer power control modes which allow for continuous application of a user-defined power. See the Synergy Operation Manual for details. Since heating solvents above their boiling points naturally generates pressure, the pressure setting on the Discover serves as a safety feature to prevent overpressurization events. This is not the pressure at which a reaction will run, but rather the maximum allowed pressure. If the pressure reaches the user-defined set point, as shown here, the power will cycle on and off to prevent overpressurization. After you press start, optimize your reaction conditions much as you would a conventional reaction. If analysis shows degradation of starting materials or product, reduce the temperature and or the reaction time. If you observe conversion and low yield of desired product, increase the temperature and or lengthen the reaction time. For those really difficult reactions where you see no product formation at all, increase the temperature or try increasing the power output if there are issues reaching the desired temperature. When optimizing solvent, the microwave offers chemists some additional characteristics which they can use to their advantage. Different solvents exhibit different microwave absorptive characteristics. High or medium absorbing solvents take in a lot of microwave energy and are well suited for heating the entire reaction solution and reaching high temperatures. Low absorbing solvents will be largely transparent to microwave energy and allow for this energy to be directed at reagents in solution for maximizing selective heating effects. You can also try greener chemistry using less solvent or no solvent in neat reactions, but be sure to start with a lower power setting to avoid temperature spikes. And for those high temperature cyclization or elimination reactions, high boiling solvents such as DMSO or DMF are not needed. Microwave chemistry is designed for using pressurized vessels which permits the use of low boiling solvents to reach high reaction temperatures, simplifying the workup and isolation process. Solvent polarity is a relatively good guideline for assessing the microwave absorptivity of solvents. When using more exotic solvents, polarity can provide a benchmark for programming initial power to ensure that a reaction solution doesn't heat too well or not well enough. This is a general list of some high, medium, and low microwave absorbing solvents along with recommended power settings. Note that high absorbing solvents typically need less available power because they will heat very well in the microwave. Programming too much power for reactions using these solvents can lead to temperature spikes or overshoot. General precautions for performing microwave chemistry are similar to those for conventional reactions. 
Beware of exothermic reactions, pyrophoric materials, and toxic reagents. In the microwave, also consider the polar or ionic properties of your solution. Acids, bases, and salts heat extremely well, and lower power settings are recommended for these. In the case of high concentrations of inorganic bases, there is a risk of microwave arcing, and normally 10% weight to volume or less is recommended. Higher concentrations can be used, but be sure to monitor the reaction reactivity as you would when first running an unknown conventional reaction. Since microwave reactions are performed in sealed vessels, it's also important to be mindful of any gaseous byproducts generated during a reaction. The Discover SP features CEM's patented Activent pressure device, which is capable of removing unwanted gaseous byproducts with user-defined settings. See the Discover Activent guide for instructions on programming in situ venting. All CEM microwaves will safely and automatically vent excess pressure, but chemists need to be aware of their chemistry. So, the cautious chemist will start with a low power input and monitor the first minute of the reaction. A good chemist wouldn't walk away from a new conventionally heated reaction, so don't do it with a microwave reaction. The Discover's patented hotkeys allow you to adjust reaction parameters during a run based on the reaction temperature ramp speed and any pressure that's generated. See the Activent Guide for instructions on Activent programming. To review, we've learned about the nature of microwaves as a form of electromagnetic energy. Their electric field heats matter kinetically through dipole rotation and ionic conduction. When compared to inefficient convective heating normally used in chemistry labs, the rapid volumetric heating of microwave energy provides numerous benefits. We also saw that microwave synthesis can be applied to virtually any reaction. Microwave chemistry is simple and can be optimized just like conventional chemistry. And the end result is a tool that allows scientists to explore novel chemistry. To gain access to operation manuals and other resources, create an account for yourself on our website, www.cem.com. You can also call or email CEM for applications and technical support, as well as for service.